Hey, I'm Nate Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist currently working in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of the indigenous peoples of North America prior to the colonization by Europeans, especially in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. Um, I've been working in this region for more than 10 years at this point, so I have a fair amount of experience to talk about these subjects. Um, as, I, as I make these videos, it is becoming pretty apparent that I need to outline how we organize our time periods here in the eastern woodlands uh, and throughout the rest of North America. Most people are familiar with the old world system that runs from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age and the Iron Age and then the classical and medieval and so forth. But obviously that system doesn't apply here in the Americas. So uh, we had to work out our own kind of chronology uh, system. As I go through this, remember that I'm describing things in very general terms. There are always regional variations um, and nuances that I really don't have the time to get into in this particular video. Uh, the first archaeological period that we talk about in North America is called the Paleo-Indian or the Paleo-American period. This covers the time from when the first Paleolithic period humans from the Old World, from Eurasia, set foot on the North American continent. Uh, likely somewhere on the western coast in Alaska until to the end of the last ice age and the onset of the Holocene around 11,500 years ago. This was the time that the megafauna um, are still around the giant bison, bison antiquus, or the mastodons. And uh, we know that from kill sites that uh, included embedded spear points in the skeletons of these animals, they were hunted at least occasionally during uh, at least until their extinction during the late Paleo-Indian period. This period is followed by the Archaic period, which unfortunately was named before we really understood how complicated and uh, diverse the cultures were during this time period. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that at this time we don't see any solid evidence of strong social hierarchies. Uh, there are no kings, chiefs, emperors, anything like that, controlling people's actions with political authority. Leadership still appears to exist, but it's typically situational or more rarely kind of an achieved status that they can uh, organize large numbers of people. But it's not a uh, like a pharaoh situation where authority is inherited and passed down through generations. Um, this time period is really complicated and it's definitely going to need a series of videos um, to really flesh out what was going on, but I'll do my best to summarize it. Um, it's broken into three parts. The early archaic is the time period that the descendants of the Paleo-Indian peoples began to adapt to the changing environment at the end of the last ice age. Um, these cultures are still mostly nomadic hunters and gatherers. Pottery hasn't been invented yet. There's no agriculture. The middle archaic things change quite a bit. The climate gets very hot and dry, and so the Great Plains environment starts to expand eastward by a bit. Um, this is where we see some of the first recognizable monuments in the eastern woodlands. Watson Break in Louisiana is one that I've talked about before, but there are also monuments um, made out of mussel shell and oyster shell along both the Atlantic coast, kind of from the Carolinas down to Florida, and also along the uh, Ohio River Valley and other associated rivers in kind of the same region. Um, these, uh, these shell mounds get to be as large as like you know, athletic stadiums, and uh, they are associated with human burials as well as dog burials and uh, exotic goods and materials that were imported in. The late archaic sets the stage for just about everything that comes after. The uh, Remember that up till this point there's no ceramic vessel technology and plant domestication hasn't been invented yet. The late archaic is when both of these things happen, but they don't become widespread immediately. Plant domestication begins with a handful of weedy and starchy plants in the area around like Middle Tennessee and up further north. And the first domesticates included uh, quinopodium, which is re uh, related to quinoa, and sunflowers. Ceramic vessels start being made along the coast from Carolina down to northern Florida as well, and in pockets along the, the Gulf, kind of in northern Alabama, Mississippi area. But again, since most people were nomadic or at least semi nomadic at this time period, ceramic breaks fairly easily. It's not particularly um, suitable for that kind of lifestyle, so it didn't become widespread at this point. 
but shortly after this, uh, people living in the southern Appalachian region start making kind of imitations of these pots out of uh, material called steatite or soapstone, which is a very soft mineral that you can actually carve with your fingernail, um, but it's, it's fairly easy to make vessels out of them. Um, both ceramic artifacts uh, like effigies and uh, soapstone bowl fragments are found in large numbers at the Poverty Point site, um, among other materials that uh, were imported. And I've talked about Poverty Point a little bit in some other videos. Um, it's kind of the, a monument to the amount of social interaction that's going on during this time period and across such vast uh, spaces all the way from the, uh, the Great Lakes region in the northern mid Midwest and also along the Carolina coastal region. After the Archaic period ends, the Woodland period begins, and there are several massive changes that occurred during this transition. Um, first, the monuments that were being built and used during the late Archaic period are fairly suddenly abandoned. The trade networks associated with these ceremonial centers break down, and the general climate shifts to roughly modern conditions. Um, including the mixed hardwood forests that characterize the eastern woodlands today. Also, I hadn't mentioned this yet, but the sea levels had been fluctuating over the course of the Archaic period, and it generally stabilized at modern levels at the onset of the early woodland period. In fact, those sea level rises uh, are believed to be one of the reasons that Poverty Point was abandoned. So the Middle Woodlands saw a return of this kind of interregional interaction and trade, uh, including the emergence of what's called the Hope Hopewellian um, or the Hopewell religious culture. Uh, this started in Ohio and featured burial mound construction that often incorporated uh, imported grave goods like uh, copper or mica objects, again, from the Appalachians and from the Great Lakes. Various uh, regions in the southeast had their own kind of expressions of Hopewell culture. For instance, uh, the Tapina culture that's kind of found in northern Alabama, uh, central Tennessee, um, also does the whole burial mound uh, practice um, and they were buried with these copper real shaped necklaces called gorgets. Uh, they kind of look like the, uh, the Under Armour logo actually. Um, they also were buried sometimes with carved objects made of a black mineral called galena that comes from around St. Louis. So we're, we're kind of seeing a return to this kind of interregional trade networks that are centered around mortuary and burial cults. And it was at the end of this period that the bow and arrow uh, first appear as a hunting or military weapon, and the end of this period shows signs of endemic warfare uh, after the collapse of the Ho Hopewellian religion, which seemed to be kind of holding things together at the time. The late woodland period is fairly short-lived in most regions because it gets supplanted fairly quickly by what's called the Mississippian. I'll talk about that in a minute. But generally, this is the period of uh, restabilization after the late woodland conflicts, um, expansion of agriculture, things like that. Uh, various post-Hopewellian ceremonial offshoots start to pop up here and there. The final period of uh, pre-colonial archaeology is called the Mississippian period, and again, this doesn't happen everywhere. Um, there are two important points on this. Like, it, first off, uh, the Mississippian culture is a fully agricultural society with an established social hierarchy. You do have um, institutional power structures where you didn't really have them before. Um, and you also have kind of the support of um, religious and craft specialists. Uh, because of the food surpluses that are produced by, by agriculture. Um, and again, these are, this doesn't happen everywhere. For example, in the uh, upland Appalachian Mountains, for instance, upper North Carolina kind of areas, they don't really ever adopt this. They Im have some imitations of artifact types. Um, there's a site called Katie Griffith where they're manufacturing pottery that uses the same kind of symbols on the outside, but it's not manufactured in the same way that Mississippian pottery is made. Um, so again, it doesn't, it doesn't happen everywhere. Their kind of influence goes all over the place in the Eastern Woodlands, but not everyone becomes fully Mississippian. Kind of in the same way that not everyone during the Roman Empire becomes actually Roman. They're just influenced by, um, Roman culture to varying degrees. So it's not a single empire. It's more like a group of, uh, a series of city-states that, uh, rise, fall, ebb, and flow, and are, and, uh, 
on and off conflict with each other. Warfare is common between these city-states. It's not ongoing, but it flares up and then dissipates again fairly regularly. Um, but like I said, not every region adopted Mississippian culture. Um, and Mississippian states appear to have collapsed about the same time that the first um, European colonists start to get to the shores of North America. Um, so that's a very brief summary of the archaeological periods that we talk about uh, here in the Eastern Woodlands. Um, I've had to gloss over a lot of detail and simplify some certain things, but I intend to make more videos that can give each of these time periods a uh, greater degree of attention and, um, and nuance. This video is more so that if I mention a time period in another video and you're not exactly sure what, uh, when I'm talking about or what's going on at that time period, um, simultaneously you can refer back to this to get an idea of what else was going on. Um, hopefully that wasn't too long-winded. Uh, as always, thank you for watching.